Musings Podcast with Fairbairn and Russell. Hello and welcome to the Market Musings podcast here on Stockbox, where today our guest is the CEO of Caracol Gold, Robbie McRae. Hi, Robbie. Good to have you on the podcast. How are you? Morning, gents. Very well in yourselves. Pleasure to be here. Yes, very good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Of course, you are you, your flagship project is the Kilimapesa Gold Mine over in Kenya in the Miguri Greenstone Belt. And we're going to learn a bit about that today as well as a bit about yourself. But I need to, of course, introduce or welcome my uh, my co-host, Kenny. Kenny, what's the weather like over there? Because in The Hague right now, you can barely see your hand in front of your face if you're outside. It is extremely foggy. Yeah, hi, Robbie. Great to have you on the podcast. Yeah, it's a bit dark and miserable in Scotland, but that's probably covers about 95% of the year. So just a normal day in Scotland. Okay, okay. And what, what, what what's it like over in, uh, in Kenya, Robbie? 30 degrees and sunny, gents. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Never mind. I'm actually going on holiday today, so at least I'm I'm going somewhere and I've got a hot tub, so it can rain all at once. I've got beer from the hot tub. I'll I'll be happy. That's good. <laughs> definitely. But no, it's great to have you on the the, the podcast, Robbie. And obviously, we we had uh, Jason on a few weeks ago, and Jason gave us a bit of a so a, a life story of what you know where he grew up, what his childhood was like, his education, his early career, you know, successes, failures. And, that, you know, then we moved on, obviously, to uh, the, the scale of opportunity that is Caracal Gold. So today it's your turn to be put in the spot. And really, it's just an opportunity for you, Robbie, to give us, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, you know, take us back as, as far as you want, you know, where you were born, what it was like growing, what it was like growing up in the country you were born, and then just... Just take us through your, your your journey in life. Basically, that's doesn't doesn't need to be great detail. You know, just just whatever you want to to tell investors because people people like to invest in people. You can, we always say you can have the best projects in the world, but if you don't have the right people running these projects, then it'll never work. So, over to you, Robbie. Sure, guys. Um. Yeah, I was I was born um, in South Africa. I grew up in Johannesburg. I went to school in Johannesburg. I went to university in Johannesburg. Started my working career in Johannesburg. So yeah, uh, South African born, um, Johannesburg, bred and raised an educated person. Um, I first got involved in the mining industry through my dad. Um, he ran a fairly large. Um, metallurgical design processing and construction company called Metallurgical Design and Management, um, MDM for short. And I guess he was kind of my um, my guide and a bit of a mentor. Um, MDM were very successful. They went into Ghana and into Tanzania pre-1994, which many South African sort of private companies wouldn't venture out into Africa pre-1994, pre-democracy, and, and, and they created a huge success in Tanzania and in Ghana in those days. And I was very fortunate to have worked out outside of the country as a young man and got exposure to the African mining and exploration industry at, at a young age. Um, cut my teeth through that. I um, spent many years working. Um, I've worked in 23 African countries through my career, some of them on the contracting side, but I was always fascinated by these guys who would fly into country and they were listing companies in London on the ASX or the TSX and I watched them come in and drilling these projects. And I was working on projects where information was being published in the international press and on these international exchanges and Growing up in SA, but we, we never had any exposure to that. The, the yeah. mining industry was always dominated by the big guys, um, and, and there, there were no juniors. But it was fascinating to me, and um, it was it was something that once I left MDM, I I then I then pursued. Yeah, I was just going to say, obviously, you, you worked in in multiple countries in Africa. What kind of commodities were you exploring for or, or working on at that particular time? 
again, we, we were exposed. I was exposed to all. I mean, um, MDM worked right across the spectrum. Being Africa, a large gold focus, but we, 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 we designed and constructed copper-based metal project in Zambia and the DRC. Um, we did industrial minerals in West Africa and East Africa and South Africa, Zimbabwe, um, gemstones in Zambia, diamonds in Botswana and the Congo. Um, I, I suppose future tech metals, they weren't called that at the time. We did um, tantalum, lithium, tin up in Mozambique. So I was exposed to a multitude of commodities and, and scales of projects. I was very fortunate. Yeah, okay. It sounds like a, a good spectrum of, of you know, projects and, and commodities, which always sets in good stead for uh, you know when you, when you jump into the, the, the sort of CE role. And so, what what was your first break then to get into the kind of sort of uh, PLC environment? Um, we we the, the the first the first major project I did on my own. Um, I was partnered with a, a a local Congolese businessman. His name is Christian Akuna. And him and I acquired the Zanaga Iron Ore License up in Congo Brazzaville. Um, it was a, a very unusual country um, to for for our first venture, but it, an extremely exciting project. Um, we financed it out of the UK originally. We raised some money out of the UK. Um, we handed over management to a management team after the first couple of million pounds had been invested. And um, it was listed on either the AIM or the main board in London later um, under Zanaga Iron Ore Company. And I think at its peak, it had a 450 million pound market cap. So that was our and my first foray into, in, into the capital markets. And the model that we followed was to acquire the license, do the initial, raise the initial money, do the initial work, but then we brought in a management team to take it over and to run it and, 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 and to really look after it. Um, from there, we, 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 we targeted and I was involved in um, f- um, fertilizer exploration in northern Angola and, in, and across the border in the DRC. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, we listed a company um, in Australia eventually. We acquired the licenses privately, put the first couple of million dollars in ourselves. We then listed the company in Australia, um, took the project quite far down on the exploration um, and the plant design value curve. And then again, we handed it over to a management team. Um, that project, it's taken a while, but um, I, I, I follow the, the company on the ASX quite closely. And very pleased to say that it looks like the team have got the financing in place and they're actually going to be building Angola's first fertilizer plant based on, on, on the phosphate that they're going to be mining. Um, recently, I mean, it, it, it's, it's literally hot off the press. It's the last couple of months that they've announced that. I think it's in partnership with the IFDC. So very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, Deb, good, good to have a couple of successes uh, on the CV. It definitely, it definitely helps. So it does. But- Mark, I'm sorry, I've, I've been talking too much. I'll let you jump in. That's all right. So you started with 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 your dad, Robbie. Was that really what were you doing? Was it very much on the sort of the cold face, so to speak, or what kind of uh, things did you did activities did you get up to? No, I mean I, I come from a finance background, so um, okay. he made me a site accountant. Okay. Um, I was, I, I asked for a year off to travel the world, and he said. Go and work on sites in Africa and see what you can find. Earn some money at the same time. Okay. <laughs> so that was my, my my year off. So it was good. Okay. And you, you said you'd been in, what, 23 or worked in 23 African countries. That's a, that's a heck of a lot. Any any highlights stand out to you? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, for un, un, unusualness, um, we, 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 we built a gold mine in the middle of the, in, of the southern, in the middle of the Sahara in southern Algeria. That was incredible. It was amazing. Um, I'd, I'd, uh, yeah, um, ab- absolutely unbelievable. Um, we've gone into, into uh, one of my first jobs with, with MDM was in Tanzania. And I lived for 18 months in a town called Moshi in Tanzania. And it's basically at the foothills of Kilimanjaro. Mm. Um, and we, we climbed Kilimanjaro half a dozen times in those years. And I guess being in my early twenties, I didn't fully appreciate 
the privilege I had um, at the time. Yeah. If I could go back now, I think I would have created more memories. But being at, living at the base of Kilimanjaro for 18 months, I, I, can't, I guess I took it a little bit for granted. Mm. Well, you tend to do that when you live in a, in a place, don't yeah. you? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit like, a bit like <laughs> Scotland every time I get, you know, friends visit and they say, uh, oh, this is give- fantastic and... You know, I just take it for granted that I'm sitting next to Loch Lomond, you know, and it's on my doorstep, you know, whereas people people come to yeah. holiday there, you know, and I, I sometimes forget that. Absolutely. Um, at the moment, we, Kilima Pesa is 20 kilometers as the crow flies from the Masai Mara. Um, I fly into the Masai Mara once, well, I, I, I go out every week for, for, for meetings in Nairobi on a Friday and I fly back in on a on on a Saturday, and um, I'm sitting next to people who are on their bucket list holiday. So yeah, we don't appreciate what we have in Africa. Mm. It's it, it, it's we sometimes have to just take our time. And uh, what do you say? Smell the smell the roses. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So so just just to pick back up in your your career, Robbie. So the the, the our second success was the the, the fertilizer project, and and I think it was Angola. You said which is now. You know they're building building the plan. What what was the next what was the next move after that? Um, I I took some time out to to spend with my young family. Um, mm-hmm. my, my my kids were in sort of um early teen. Well, some some sort of all age between eight and thirteen. So I I took some time not off. I um, had had some private businesses in South Africa and some spent some time um with the family. Um. I'm just trying to remember when I met Jason. Um, I met Jason, I guess, around 2015, 2016. Um, and we, 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 we did a venture. We, 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 we did something together on industrial minerals in Uganda on a, a mine called Namakara Vermiculite Mine. Um, it's it, 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 a very exciting project, very successful transaction. But ultimately, um, it wasn't a successful business. The industrial minerals is a tough, a tough business. Um, we, I don't think we fully understood the comp- complexities of the marketing and sales side of industrial minerals. Um, so I think some shareholders did pretty well out of it. But long term, we eventually had to give it back to the original owners that we bought it from. Um, and I believe as a private company, it's, it's very successful at the moment, but it wasn't a good fit for a small listed junior. Um, so that was my, my, the first business that I had with Jason. And, and that's what I did from after I came after, after I took my, my sabbatical and came back into the mining industry. And, and obviously working with Jason, that, that led on to the, you know, Caracal Gold. So, so how did how did that come about with with Jason? Was it an opportunity that he's went out and pursued, or was it just a case of right place, right time? And it was there, available. Yeah, I, I mean, Jason is very high energy, um, uh, and, and 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 he's always looking for new opportunities. Um, yeah, Caracal Gold was was brought to me um, during COVID. Everyone was kind of marking time, wondering what they were going to do next. Um, I was introduced to Gerard Kisby Green, who was the previous CEO of Gold Platt, um, and a, a mutual friend of ours said, "Hey, you guys are both in the mining industry. Why don't you meet?" And Gerard came to my office in the middle of COVID, and we got to chatting, and we were talking about all sorts of things. And he he said to me, "Robbie, he said there's this asset that I know, and would you be interested?" And I literally went. Onto the internet, I googled it and I said, "Jeepers, this is fantastic! Yes, why don't we have a go?" Um, luckily for us, it was one of, I guess, a bit unusual—a a junior company owning an asset in Africa, but Gold Platte also based out of Johannesburg, and we were there. And during COVID, I guess because of the proximity and all being in Johannesburg, we were able to put together a deal. We started negotiating in June. By the end of July, we had signed and put the deal together. Um, it was logical for, for, for us to get Jason involved. He's, he, he's, he's the one with the access to the financial markets and the funding and all of that side. And, and Jason came on board immediately. I mean, pr- prior to the deal being signed, he, he guided the, the negotiations and the term sheets and everything. And yes, so we were very fortunate. We, when I guess a lot of people weren't being able to do deals across Africa, 
everyone went kind of inwardly focused. Mm-hmm. Australians focused on Australia, Canadians kind of focused on, on, on Canada. We managed to put the deal together. Um, lo- lovely story. We, we had to get the, due, the, the technical and financial due diligence done up in Kenya. Um, and Gerald and I and the team, we, we, we escaped South Africa on an Ethiopian Airlines repatriation flight, believe it or not. By, by some fast talking, we managed to get tickets um, issued by the Ethiopian Airlines office. And six of us jumped on a plane. Everybody said we couldn't travel. And, and we made it to, to, to Kenya. Um, and 90 days later, we were all still on site and we had taken over the operation. We'd raised the first funding. We'd invested four hundred and fifty thousand dollars into the project. Um, and uh, a year later, first of September, I believe it was, we listed it in London. So yeah, um, uh, uh, for me, it's a wonderful story. I, I love telling it. Mm, it's very yeah, well, very rapid development. Yeah, like yes. you took the words right out of my mouth, Mark. And, you know the the the, the pace. I mean, I, I can remember originally when when you guys started out it just it just seemed like your social media account was just extremely active you know people on site all the time you know lots of activity you know upgrades to the plant it just you know a, a massive achievement in such a a short period of time there's companies that take years and years to, to do what you guys have done in the last 12 months i mean i think from i'm trying to remember i think jason said there's maybe like three three four hundred people on site now i mean it's a, it's a massive operation yeah, I mean we've got we've got just over four hundred staff. When when we got to site, the, the the site was obviously on care and maintenance, but there were ten there were ten staff members. Um, we're over four hundred people now. Um, we're the largest employer in the county where we are. We're the largest taxpayer in the county where we are. Um, we've 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 made a big impact in 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 in, in the county as as as, as well as Kenya. Um, I think I mean, without sounding cliched. Um, the, 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 the approach that we all agreed from the beginning is that we would be hands-on. We wouldn't be a junior who's listed in London with an executive in Australia, somebody else in Joburg and somebody else in London. Um, Jason was about two weeks behind us. He left Perth and arrived in, um, in Kenya early in September last year. He hasn't been back home to Australia. He's been to visit his family in the UK over Christmas last year, but he's hands-on getting stuff done. Um, I've been in country here since August of last year. Uh, Gerard comes in and out every month. He's very hands-on. So the, the, the management team and the directors, and we're all here, you know, getting things done. Um, we, we didn't inherit a greenfield or an advanced exploration project. We inherited a mine. So yeah. we inherited $20 million worth of investment infrastructure. It's easy to say. It, it comes with a lot of challenges. You know, it, it's, a, it's a different beast. So you inherit something where you inherit, you, you inherit something warts and all. You inherit all the good and all the bad. So we had to be hands-on. There, there, was, there was a lot of good old issues that had to be dealt with. There was a lot of um, social issues, all sorts of things across the board that had to be dealt with. And, and we've, We've tackled each of them head on. We have, we have very good working relationships with everybody from the Minister of Mines to the Permanent Secretary of Mines in Kenya to the lady who supplies us milk and makes a little bit of profit of us from supplying us milk on the ground. So we've tackled it head on and, and, and we've really got on with things. Yeah. Um, and our, our ability to identify the project identify the opportunity and then to to implement i think all all of our shareholders are, and investors are seeing the benefit from that um and uh i mean the the rns that went out this morning i mean what better um verification of 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 our exploration strategy and and etc than putting out you know the first results from that so yeah we 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 very happy we got a lot of hard work going forward um there's going to be lots of ups and downs but it's, it's a very exciting opportunity well talking of ups and downs does it does it, it sounds to me like it has been a bit of a roller coaster ride would you would you agree and is it still still very much going on 
Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, my, my, the mining business needs stability. You know, you, you, you've, you've, got to, you've, you've, you've got to mine a certain grade, you've got to put a certain tonnage through the plant um, to produce a certain amount of gold every month. You can't, hmm. you can't put 700 tons through the plant today, 100 tons the next day. You know, m- m- you make money in mining by stability. Um, and, and, and that's really what we've, we, we're starting to, to achieve now. It's what the operation never had previously. So we've, we've brought in all the right skills. We've, we've raised capital and deployed capital into the right areas to, to achieve the stability. Um, we're still learning every day. Um, we, we've, we, we still haven't got to, to where we need to be, but the, 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 the stability is there. I, I sat with Gerard in a production meeting this morning and we both can see the results of all of our hard work coming through. And that's going to mm. translate ultimately into the numbers and the value for the shareholders. Yeah. But yes, um, if you ask me how far along the process we are, we, we, we're still in the early stages. Early stages, yeah. I think it was more because it's just a sheer sort of rapidness to how this has this come about. And also that you say you're all active, you're on the ground, which is unusual to find in, the, in a junior company. And it seems your Twitter is extremely active. I mean, it looks like you're pouring gold almost every day. Um, and yeah, you're up and, and, you know, it's getting you sort of booked in for this podcast. You have to find a bit of time, I think, because you're just so, so busy. But um, it, it's good. To, it's good to see. I mean, are you seeing things um, on the ground? Is it a similar feeling that it's really just rapid progress? Yes, very much so. Um, you know, we, 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 smelt, we, we, we smelt four times a month. Four times a month. Um, and, okay, and that's and 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 that's dictated to from a cash flow point of view, from a security point of view, from a capacity point of view. So um, I know Jason's very active on the Twitter. Um, I certainly don't want to get the expectation that we smelt every day. No, no, that's my that was my bad words. No. Yeah, once a week maybe. No. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So no, we we we're very structured in 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 in, in, in that approach. Um, you know, the, 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 the kind of skill sets and the people that you need for running an early stage exploration project differ to the skill set you, that you need for an advanced exploration project, differ to what you need for a feasibility study team, and then again, differ for what you need for a production team. And at Kilima Pesa, we've got early stage exploration. Um, there was the RNS out about that this morning. We have advanced exploration both on surface and underground in the Kilimapesa Hill. We're running feasibility study work for optimizing the mine, optimizing the plant, and we're running production. So, uh, and, and I guess that generates a lot of news. You know, you're generating four stories across the board at each time. Um, to, to manage all of those teams and to be in control of all those teams, you've got to be here. You, you, you can't do it remotely. You, 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 you have to be here. And we, We've, we've recruited a very competent, skilled team. Um, I, I believe we've probably got 80% of the team that we need in sight. Um, again, we, we, we not, you don't jump in your car and go to the supermarket from Kilima Pesa. We're pretty remote. Um, it's not everybody's cup of tea. So some of the good talent that we've attracted have come and said, no, we don't want to live out there. It, it, it's, it's not for us. But um, the, the team that we've got is, it's good and it's growing and, and, and they're delivering. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a couple of words that, that stuck out for me there, Robbie, when you were talking is that the fact that it's, it's unusual for a, a, a junior company to be exploring and producing at the same time, which you guys are, are obviously doing. It's usually one or the other. So it's, it, it, it's, it's quite unique. And uh, obviously I'm aware as well that this, the scale of opportunity there as well, because there's, there's the potential for, you know, increased resource i mean you have barely scratched the surface for want of a better term there yes very much so i mean um our we've always believed that the potential in kenya is equivalent to what there was in tanzania but that tanzania was 20 years ahead you know when i went into tanzania companies like samex were there pangea exploration were there their model was pretty simple. They were consolidating ground, spending lots of money, lots of money on exploration. And then, I mean, the, the history talks for itself. Um, Bullion Hulu has ended up in Barrick. Uh, 
Gator ended up in Anglo Gold Ashanti, but those operations were colonials found them, mined them on a small scale. Juniors out of the UK, Australia, Pangea was out of South Africa, Rob Stoll and Anton um, explored them. And then some of them developed them and unsold them. Some of them, the big guys said, we don't need you anymore and, and, and developed them themselves. But I was there, I was in country in Tanzania when I saw that happening. And I firmly believe that that it will happen in Kenya. It's just two decades later. You guys are pretty close, close to the Tanzania border. Is it 30, 40 kilometers, I think, from, from memory? I've, 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 I've entered Tanzania on my mountain bike. Let it be illegally when I got lost. So, yes, <laughs> 20 k's. 20 k's, yeah. So and there's, there's lots of infrastructure, obviously, within close proximity. But you guys have got your own your own plan anyway, or you're building your own your own plant up. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting times. We were going to do like a kind of overview of uh, killing my pizza, but you've kind of covered it in the uh, in, in the chat. That that's the way these podcasts work. Sometimes we just have a chat and that, and everything comes out. Uh, so it's really really good. Mark, do you, do, you, do you want to put uh, Robbie on the spot with the, the sixty second? Oh yeah, sure, we could do. But I just I just yeah. wanted to sort of ask a question before we before we got. Yeah, there. of course, of course, I'm jumping the gun. Are we? Uh, so so when when you say Robbie about Kenya being. Tanzania was sort of 20 years ago. Is that in the Maguri Greenstone Belt then? You really feel there's, there's incredible potential here? Yeah, I mean, the, the Greenstone Belts, again, I'm, 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 I'm not a geologist. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm not an expert. I, I categorize them in three areas. You've got the Maguri Belt where we are. Then there's a belt which we call internally the Central Belt, which really is the area that lies between us and the Kakamega area. And, and the Kakamega area is controlled by Shanta. Shanta bought their package of licenses from Acacia. So we, we, we're in the southern belt, Shanta on, on, on the northern belt, and then there's the central belt in between. And, um, I, I don't know what the square kilometre area is of that entire area, but I guess it's the same sort of size as the Tanzanian Greenstone Belt area. Um, I've cycled it. I've driven it in cars half a dozen times and 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 gold is being produced on an artisanal scale everywhere and there's colonial drilling and colonial shafts all over the place which you know um it's exactly what happened in tanzania the 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 guys in colonial times were mining on a small scale very high grade material artisanal miners everywhere um modern exploration techniques were employed and multiple multi-million ounce deposits were discovered um acacia got over a million ounces at 11 grams per ton up at their operation um i follow shanta very closely they're in tremendous exploration success i i don't know what their number is but they, they they're going to develop a mine up there not based on a million ounces it's going to be a multiple of that if they carry on with their success mm-hmm. that they're achieving at the moment mm-hmm. um and we, we, we believe the same around Kilima Pesa. I mean, um, the, the RNS this morning speaks for itself. We've, mm-hmm. we, we applied our minds to the historical data. We, we put a, 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 a new a, a, a approach to it and, and, and we're delivering the, the results. So, yeah, I, um, long, long, may, long may all the Canadians and other Australian juniors Stay away from Kenya. Let us get on. Let Shanta <laughs> ourselves and Red Dog get on with our jobs. Yeah, that sounds. And, and, and prove it up. Indeed. And I'm just looking at a picture I think was put out on the 8th of October on your Twitter page there. It's like a, a distant shot, which looks like it's going, it's showing the, uh, well, it says the newly targeted southern mineralization zone in addition to and south of the Jork compliant resource. And it looks like there, is that the heart of the operations? It looks like there's sort of a camp there and a processing plant and then a sort of a. Um, yes. A, 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 a heap as well. It looks like there's a heap there. So that, that's the tailings dam. It's a tailings so the, dam. The, 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 mm-hmm. the, the tailings dam. If, if, if you're looking at that photograph, the tailings dam is on the right hand side. Yeah. And and that's the 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 milling CIL plant on the left hand side. Okay. And it's all underground, is it? In the the operation. Current production is all from underground. Yes. Underground. So w- where that photograph was taken from is actually at the adit, which goes into the underground. So 
we were standing outside of the attic looking across to the plant from the underground workings. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. And then you're exploring further, as you said, with the RNS this morning, the trenching that's, that's delivered some, some pretty uh, compelling results in, in, in this sort of same area, are you? Yeah. So um, one of the additions to our team um, is a, a, a local Kenyan geologist. His name is Collins Aseto. Collins was part of the discovery team for Acacia. On the opera on the project which now belongs to Shanta. Yeah, so Collins joined us early in July, um, as as and and he's our senior exploration geologist. And our initial thing was to get him in and for him to design the exploration program around Kilimapesa Hill, and then to to to, to design a regional exploration program. Put forward his exploration program. Um, we kicked off the trenching based on what he had put forward on the first of September. Uh, it was all very exciting at the time to look at it on paper. Um, and, and, you know, anything with exploration, you don't know if you're going to be successful or not. And, I mean, literally, the, the results were put out this morning. And, and, and we believe that Collins is, has got it right first time. We, we targeted that area. Um, it's right on the, on, it's right on the um, western border of our license. And it's just south to the plant. So it was very easy to support it logistically and technically with excavators, machinery, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, we, we, he, 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 he mapped it, identified it, we started trenching it, and we put out the first results this morning. Okay, okay. And the plan is to, to, to continue ramping up production at the current operations as well as explore further as well, and also acquisitions, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I read somewhere as well. Yes, yes. I mean, again, and that's probably one of the benefits of having been for having the full management team and all the directors on the ground in, 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 in Kenya for this year is we've been brought tremendous opportunities within Kenya um, as well as within the region. Um, and those negotiations, we've, we've, we've come out public instead of at a very advanced stage. Um, and, and there's something very exciting in, in, in the pipeline. I, I hope that Jason and Gerald can close it out in the in the next couple of weeks and then and, and it can be announced okay it's certainly an exciting story um uh, just a, another sort of odd question what about security i mean you said it's very remote and there's a lot of people there is security an issue or not not really no i mean obviously you're dealing with a high value commodity mm. so you've got to be on top of your game um and and we're very experienced at that we've we've we've, we've been involved in the design and engineering of, of, of plants right across africa so that sort of fell into place automatically um so we, we've, we've got everything that you would expect um from a, a gold processing point of view security wise um personnel wise and and that sort of stuff we're in the middle of a very friendly community it's a it's a huge tourism um mm -hmm. i think it's one of the seven wonders of the world the Masai Mara. so mm. um community are very friendly very very supportive we've never had an issue um no, so, so security-wise, I'm very comfortable. I, I ride my bicycle 50 kilometers out in any direction from here, and I feel very safe and very comfortable. Okay. Um, I've brought my kids to site a number of times. I've run with them. So, no, we, 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 we're safe and comfortable, but we're vigilant. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And do you, do you, do you often get sightings of the wildlife as well? Often. And, yeah. And, <laughs> um, again, I... After this conversation, I'm going to try and not take it for granted anymore. We've got zebra on Kilimapesa Hill. Um, the airstrip that we land, you'll, you'll come into land, and it might sound cliched, but the plane will have to buzz the runway because mm. there's a couple of giraffe in the middle of the mm -hmm. runway. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, we kind of live the movie sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. I had a safari in Botswana a couple of years ago, and yeah, I'm itching to, to get back out. I think the next trip is going to have to be Kenya. There are so many uh, companies that I can go and visit in that area as well, including you guys uh, as, part of a, as part of a safari trip and uh, get, some, uh, get some media. But uh, I, I think it's, it's great. I mean, what, what's the sense on the ground? I guess it's very active, is it? Do is, is, you get a sense of energy on the ground with, with what's going on and everyone that's around you? Yes, very much so. Um, we it, it, it's it's very energised. I mean, there's a lot of commercial activity around us. The the little town that we operate from, uh, I mean, there we there, there hasn't been a bank. Um, I met with the deep the deputy district commissioner yesterday, and um, one of the major banks in Kenya is going to set up a branch in the town because of the commercial activity. Because we've okay. got 500 people, and those 500 people are 
creating business. So there'll be a bank in the little town where we are soon. So yes, the energy around the operation is 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 high. Um, most of the business that's historically come from the county where we are, Narok, um, took a massive smack during COVID, and then it was really down. And it's tremendous to see the tourism business coming back online. Or mm. you know, visitors are coming back to Kenya. So the 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 buzz in the region is high. Tourism is coming back. We 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 doing very well. Um, across the the border in our neighbouring county, Red Rock are there, and, and and they've announced that they've started doing some drilling on on their license. Mm-hmm. So we, we we're hoping that they'll have some success, and that will generate some more information, more mm. info for us. So yes. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much. It's it's a, it's a really it's a really great story, I think. And and like I say, yeah, I would love to to come out and visit you guys at some point because uh, yeah, I, I do miss it. And it just it's it's, it's it's an exciting story, I think, to be part of. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a region that's going to see a lot of activity. Um, yeah. So I wonder, as Kenny mentioned earlier, we can. Mark, maybe... you don't need you don't need an invitation. We we we're, we're you don't need an invitation. I can just turn up. (laughs) (laughs) Don't don't be surprised if 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 a lone guy with a backpack full of cameras turns up one day. (laughs) (laughs) No problem. I'll tell security to look out for you. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. So uh, maybe we could finish uh, with like a we do a sixty second challenge sometimes with uh, with directors that are on the podcast where you have about sixty seconds to give a sort of elevator pitch to, to listeners on on why they should or might consider. Uh, to invest or at least look a bit further into uh, the investment proposition of, of Caracol Gold. Are you? Uh, I know we're putting you on the spot for that, but are you? Are you up for the challenge? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Well, I will count you in. Then, in three, two, one, take it away. Uh, Caracol Gold, an East African-focused exploration and mining company. Um, we encompass everything that an investor could be looking for. We have greenfields exploration with some, some, some fantastic first results coming out. We've got brownfields exploration, which we'll commence drilling on during the, last, during the third quarter of this year. Tremendous growth envisaged from this current 671,000 resource base to over a million within the next 12 months. Successful processing operations, which are steadying out Production is increasing and um, going very well. Strong, committed management team being recruited on site. Directors all in country with significant skin in the game. So, yeah, I think we've, from from what an investor could be looking for, I, I hope we've got all the bases covered. Perfect. Excellent. That was 58 seconds. There we are under under the target there. So, good job. Thank you very much. So, Kenny, do you have any any further points for, for Robbie or are we, are we good? No, it was just quite... Nice to listen for the last 10 minutes here, because obviously, Mark, you were doing most of the talking. Uh, no, it's, it's been great to have you on, Robbie, and, uh, you know, there's there's lots and Thanks, lots of news coming. So, yeah, well, I'm sure Mark will be will be doing many interviews over the, the coming weeks with you guys, and uh, it, it'll be great to see how the story progresses uh, as the year ends and into a new year, a new year, a new year even. Yeah, I hope so. It's, it, it, there'll be lots to follow, I think. So, um, but thank you very much, Robbie, for your time today, giving us a bit about your your previous history and uh, give, yeah, telling us a little bit more of the story of uh, of what you've got going on at Caracol. It's, uh, it's it's very nice. Thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you very much for your time. I much appreciated. Cheers. You. Cheers. Thank you for listening to another podcast from Market Musings with Fair Ben and Russell. Tune in next time.